If you watched our Saturday Night Live last week, you saw this table. We took a boat and everybody said dark stain top with a white base. So today I'm gonna to show you how I transform this $15 antique into a family heirloom. So to get started, I'm just gonna mask this lip off and then we'll flip it on its lid and paint it upside down. That way I don't have to worry about paint getting on this whole piece that's already been sanded. So I'm using DIY paint and vintage linen. I'll have Zeb pop the link above about painting with DIY paint and chalk paint in the HVLP. We've got lots of tips and tricks. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Always mask up to protect your lungs. So we flipped it over so that way we can get these underside edges. We're gonna be super careful not to try to get it on top. We will probably have to sand a little bit for overspray, but I think we're in good shape. Sometimes on our live videos that we do on Saturday night where we show our picking finds, we don't always get to painting all of them. So when I've got a color loaded up in the hopper that we like, we're gonna go all white with these. And since I've already got vintage linen loaded up to do this table, I'm just gonna paint these real quick. So all this brown coming through is bleed through. Sometimes it comes out brown, sometimes yellow. If it was like a cherry or mahogany piece, it might be red, but it's just bleed through. It's there's no cause of the paint, no cause of the sealer. It just happens, especially on older pieces. Sometimes if I know a piece is gonna bleed through on the whole piece, then I'll shellac before I even get started. But in this case, it's just kind of splotchy. So I'm just gonna take anywhere where I see the bleed through and I'm gonna just put two or three coats of shellac and then repaint. All right, so I'm gonna remove this masking tape and then I'm gonna take a damp cloth and wipe down the top. That'll remove most of the overspray because it's still not been sealed, so it's water soluble. If I need to, I might hand sand off a few spots that I can't get off. All right, so some of this paint is not from us. That we'll have to take off. Um, you could use a magic eraser, but I'll probably just sand it off. But these parts that are just overspray are pretty well coming off with this damp rag. I've got my orbital and 220 and I'm just gonna sand off this white. This isn't completely sanded all the way down, but because we're using dark and decrepit, it'll be okay. We have not distressed the base because in case anything flops over, we wanna be able to just sand that off and pretend like it never happened. This is a water-based all natural stain, so I don't have to worry about gloves or wearing a mask or anything. And I can use a paintbrush without worrying about it getting ruined. It does have a built-in top coat, but I will put another two coats of top coat on the top of this just for a little bit of added um, durability. So I'm using the Zebra Palm Pro. It really works well on like flat surfaces like this. And you can see that the this isn't like 100% coverage. It kind of soaks in. And once it's done, I'll probably even wipe it back a little bit. So it really works like a stain. So before it dries too fast, I'm just gonna take this rag and just kind of pull some of it off. You could leave it full strength, but I'm wanting to show some more of the wood grain through. If you didn't sand your piece down far enough, this could make it splotchy, but in this case, most of the finish was gone. So I'm just wiping it off. Okay, so I'm gonna take my orbital sander, 220 sandpaper, and I'm going to give this thing a good all over chippy distress. I've got DIY clear wax. It's amazing because it's all natural. It smells good. It's not gonna hurt anything and it goes on super creamy. I'm using my Paint Pixie wax brush and I'm just gonna come in here and apply wax. After the wax sits on overnight, we will buff it off and I will probably add one more coat and then buff that off and then we'll be good to go.
All right, so the bottom is all waxed. We're gonna big top the top. I could wax it, but I'd like a little bit of sheen so that way if somebody's gotta wipe it down, it'll be a little bit easier. Big top is all natural, solvent free, so I don't need to wear a mask, don't have to worry about getting on my hands. This is a three inch Wooster foam brush. You can pick it up on Amazon. I'll have Zeb drop the link. When everything's all said and done, I'll have done about two or three coats. And then if it's got any kind of texture, I'll just take 400 grit sandpaper and sand it smooth. Okay, I've got lines here. If I just take and softly go over them with my brush, I can get rid of the lines. It also helps get rid of bubbles. If you go light to begin with, you get less bubbles. The bubbles happen when you push too hard. So I broke one of my own rules. I wanna show you down in here. I, I contaminated my big top. So now I will no longer be able to use this for whites because it will get kind of a brownish tint. What a really good rule of thumb is to pour out a little bit in like a disposable cup if you're planning on using it for other projects. So I'll write on the lid of this for stain tops only and make sure I don't use it over white paint. All right, so we wanted to show you guys this fun little project. We got it picking Saturday. We showed everybody on our live on Saturday night but we asked people what we should do with it. So we went dark on the top and the consensus was white on the bottom and we really love how this turned out. We've done a lot of two-tone in the past, but recently I've just painted the whole thing on things just because it's faster. But when we picked this, the top was pretty much all the way sanded down. And so I thought, hey, most of the work is done for me. Let's two-tone this thing. So on the base, we've got vintage linen and then we sealed that with clear wax. I did use my Paint Pixie wax brush. If you don't have a wax brush or you're not ready to invest, you can also use a limb-free rag to put it on and buff it. It's just a little bit easier with a brush to get down into the details. On the top, we used the two-inch Palm Pro for the dark and decrepit, but then we sealed it with the Wooster foam brush. And the Wooster brush is the only one of those items that you can't get at jamierayvintage.com, so Zeb will post the link below. It's almost done. We just have to buff it. I'm gonna wait until tomorrow to do the buffing, and I'll put a video in here so you can see like a complete how to wax something if you guys are interested in that. We're also gonna buff the top. We're gonna be using 400 grit sandpaper and just lightly going over it to smooth it out because it does have a little bit of texture because the wood itself wasn't super smooth when we got started and it is a little hot outside so the big top dried really fast and that will affect it. But if you just take 400 grit, go over the top, you can actually even use a paper bag yeah. and use that to smooth it out and that'll help. So if you like this video and you think you have a friend or anybody that you know, if you could share it, that'd be great. Helps us get our channel out, helps us do more DIY videos and we appreciate that. Make sure you're hitting that notifications bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos or our live videos that we do. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.